Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this event tonight. I am Clark Acock, the managing editor of the Fairview Town Crier. For those who don't know, Fairview is a community just east of Asheville in North Carolina. And the Fairview Town Crier is a community newspaper that's been around for 22 years. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. And you can find out more about us and read old issues via PDF at fairviewtowncrier.com. My welcome and introductions tonight were a little bit too long to memorize, so you may see me referring to my notes a little bit here and there. Our paper's mission is to highlight the people who live in our community. I get calls and emails about lost pets, school events, new businesses, and local history. 
I also get calls from people like Tom Milroy, who's the reason we're all here tonight. Tom told me he had written a version of Robert Burns' poem, Tam O'Shanter, from the perspective of Tam's wife. And it had been read aloud in Scotland at an event celebrating the great poet. I thought that sounded like a great story for the crier. And Tom and I worked on it for a few months to get it right. You can read that article and the poem that inspired it um, at our website. And we'll put a link at the end of the presentation to show you where to go and do that. I'm gonna let you know a few things about our presentation tonight before we get started. Unlike some other Zoom events that you may have attended, you won't be able to interact with the performers. There's no chat and no Q&A. At the end though, we will provide contact information if you wanna send some compliments to the performers or if you'd like to get in touch with any of them. We're also recording this event and if all the performers like how they did, we'll offer it up to the public. So if you wanna rewatch it, or you have friends who weren't able to make it tonight, you may be in luck. Before I introduce you to our performers tonight, we want to show you a special video that comes all the way to us from the Robert Burns Birthplace Museum in Alloway, Scotland. Greetings to the epicenter of the world of Robert Burns. I'm Hugh Farrell. I'm a volunteer guide with the National Trust for Scotland here in Alloway. I'm a best friend of Tom O'Roy, and Tom O'Roy is a best friend to me. And I'm here to wish you all the best for your celebration of Monday evening. And I'm only sorry that I can't be with you on Monday evening. Uh, even uh, virtually with you, as I have uh, other things to do. But uh, I, I feel separated by the Atlantic roar from North Carolina. And Robert Burns at one time was feeling isolated from his new bride, Jean Armour. They'd married in the spring of 1788, and he went down 44 miles to the south He'd rented a farm, but there was no homesteading, so he couldn't bring his new bride. They were separated by 44 miles, and uh, in those days it wasn't commutable, riding to and fro 44 miles each way, each day. She wrote a lovely letter to her. He's in the banks of the River Nith, the New Cumnock Hills, the highest hill, Corson Corn, lies between them. And Robert, from the south, could view Corson Corn. Jean, from the north, could view Corson Corn. Oh, where I on Parnassus Hill, or had of helic on my fill, that I might catch poetic skill to sing, how dear I love thee. But nith man be my muse as well, my muse man be thy bonny cell. When course and corn, I'll glower and spell and write, how dear I love thee. So that was Robert Burns' message to his wife. And my message to you is, I hope you enjoy your celebration of Monday night. I'm quite sure you will. I've seen the programme and I think it's a very exciting programme. So have fun. And goodbye for now. Thank you, Hugh. He also recorded a version of himself performing Tam O'Shanter, and we'll put a link where you can watch that at the end of the performance tonight. Now I'd like to introduce you to our performers tonight. First, we have Tom Milroy. There's Tom. <laughs> Tom, I mentioned earlier, is the inspiration for the event tonight. Tom's originally from Yorkshire, England, but he's lived in North Carolina for 30 some years, first in Durham and now in Fairview. Thanks, Tom. Next, we have Andrew Geller. 
Hey, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew first got interested in Scottish things when he attended a burn supper at Tom's home in Durham. Uh, since then, he's taken up the bagpipes and he has won prizes for his playing at the Grandfather Mountain Highland Games here in Western North Carolina. We're glad to have Andrew here tonight. Thank you. Next is Bobby Pell. There's Bobby. <laughs> Bobby has shared her love of story with audiences of all ages through written work, storytelling, song, and workshops. She specializes in Celtic folklore and traditions and focuses on fairy lore, ballads, and myths. She often teaches at John C. Campbell Folk School, which is where she met Tom. Thanks, Bobby. And finally, we have Daniel Sheeran. Hey, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel is a singer-songwriter and Grammy-nominated recording engineer from Asheville. He and his band, River Wireless, have played all over the US and in Europe. And one of his connections to Robert Burns is that he led the audience in singing O Lang Syne here in Asheville at the Orange Peel in 2018, New Year's Eve. Thank you all for being here tonight. And lastly, I'd like to thank Jamie McDowell and the Fairview Public Library for hosting this event. Jamie is the woman behind the curtain tonight, making sure everything goes smoothly. But thank you, Jamie. And we always love collaborating with our library. Okay, so let's get started with our performances. And Andrew Geller will start us off. Thank you, Clark. I'm going to open with Flow Gently, Sweet Afton. Burns' songs and poetry were often pastoral, reflecting that for Burns, when love and nature came together, they often enhanced the other. Sweet Afton, among thy green braes. Flow gently, I'll sing thee a song in thy praise. My Mary's asleep by thy murmuring stream. Flow gently, sweet Afton, disturb not her dream. Thou stock dove whose echo resounds through the glen. Ye wild whistling blackbirds in yon thorny den. Thou green crested lapwing, thy screaming forbear. I charge you disturb not my slumbering fair. Sweet Afton, among thy green braes. Flow gently, sweet river, the theme of my lays. My Mary's asleep by thy murmuring stream. Flow gently, sweet Afton, Disturb not her dream. Thank you, Andrew. Sounded great. And next up, we have Tom Milroy.
Hello everyone. Well, that was wonderful. That took us straight to Scotland. I said hello because people are in different time zones. It's already tomorrow today in Australia, if that makes any sense. Um, we've selected a, a sampler place, like a Middle Eastern restaurant of songs, poetry, and music tonight. And the first poem that I'm going to recite, To a Mouse, I chose because many people ask, why would you want to celebrate Robert Burns at the end of the summer? His birthday is in, in January. So why are you celebrating now? And the answer is, we have all been through quite a rough time in many different ways for many of us. And some of us must be feeling now a bit like the wee mouse. Um, and Burns had the most incredible ability to put himself into the mind of the mouse, into the mind of the plowman, into the mind of him and the mouse together, and into the minds of all of us very universally. Um, as the evening passes, I go in and out of the Scottish language and English. But with my dad being a Scottish, I sort of think about him and, and I've, I've become Scottish again. It was great to hear Hugh say Mulroy, because that's the way our name is pronounced in Scotland. And I hadn't heard that since 19, since I was working in Aberdeen way a long time ago. I bought, we, I, I asked somebody how to enliven this week. I bought a wee mouse with me this evening. It's, it's a wee bit sad because it's a tailless mouse. And there's a lot of these around these days. It means that we pick them, we don't pick them up in the usual way, we have to grab them in another way. So I'm going to be talking to this wee mouse as I recite the poem. Um, this poem, like all the Burns poems that I go down towards the soil and down towards the land, has a lot of vernacular words in it, more local words, like Tronoch. And you all know what Tronoch is because it sounds like it, it's hoar frost. It's like those grains of frost that and lying around on a frosty morning, Cronroch. And then there's a simple Scottish word, which we don't hear in England, which is just och. And both those words are in this poem. The poem that I'll be reading later, Scots Wahey, has a lot more sta standard in English in it. And because poet, uh, Burns was such an educated man, he could move very easily, even within a poem, from more standard English to the Scottish language. So and just for the, the writers, uh, there are some poets watching now. For them, there's an interesting rhyming in this poem, which is A-A-A-B-A-B. -A 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 -B. That'll make no sense to anybody else except a few poets. So here we are with the wee mouse. And Robert is working his way back and forth all day long behind the plow, behind his horse, putting the plow. And the culture of the plow, which turns the earth over, is all shiny. He's feeling bored. He spent the morning thinking up songs about the lasses in the village because he was already famous, even though he's still a very young man when he was plowing, he was already famous for writing song, uh, poems about people. So as he's going along, suddenly his culture turns up the wee mouse. And that moment, the wee, sleek, and poor and timorous beastie. Oh, what a panic's in the breastie. Then needn't start away so hasty with brickering brattle. I'd be loath to go and chase thee with murdering paddle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes thee startle. But me, thy poor earthborn companion and fellow mortal, 
I don't know what, but thou may thieve. What then for this day? Thou man leave? A demon did get in a thrive. It's a small request. I'll get a blessing with a leave and never miss it. That we be a housey to in ruin. It's silly walls, the winds are strewing. And nothing now to begin again of foggish green and bleak December's winds ensuing with snell and keen. They saw the fields lay bare and waste and weary winter coming fast and cosy here beneath the blast thou thought to dwell till crash the cruel coulter passed out through thy cell that wee bit of heap or leaves and stubble has cost thee many a weary nibble now those has turned out for all thy trouble but house or house to thaw the winter's sleety dribble and run off cold but mercy thou art not thy lane improving foresight may be in vain the best laid schemes of mice and men gang after glay and leave us naught but grief and pain for promised joy still thou art blessed compared with me the present only touches thee but oh a backward cast my e on prospects drear and forward i cannot see but guess and fear thank you tom if we weren't in scotland after andrew's playing i think we sure are now thank you all right and now bobby pell will give us a song all right hi everybody thanks so much for coming Robert Burns is known for his ballads that range many, many categories. So for tonight, we've chosen two of his love ballads that are quite popular, A Fond Kiss, which I'm getting ready to sing for you now. And then near the end of the program, I will sing A Red, Red Rose. A Fond Kiss is about first love, quite a philosophical view of it. Here we go. A Fond Kiss and then we sever a farewell and then forever deep in heart wrung tears i'll pledge thee more in sighs and groans i'll wage thee who shall say that fortune grieves him while the star of hope she leads him me nay cheerful twinkle lights me dark despair around benights me I'll ne'er blame my partial fancy. Nothing could resist my Nancy. But to see her was to love her, love but her, and love forever. Had we never loved, say kindly. Had we never loved, say blindly. Never met or never parted. We had ne'er been broken hearted. Fare thee, will my first. 
first and fairest. Fairly will thou best and dearest. Thine be ilk of joy and treasure. Peace, enjoyment, love, and pleasure. A fond kiss, and then we sever. A farewell, and then forever. Deep in heart, wrong tears, I'll pledge thee. Warring sighs and groans, I'll wage thee. That's beautiful, Bobby. Thank you. And now, are you ready for some more bagpipes? All right. Andrew will now perform a medley for us. <laughs> Thank you, Clark. I think these are the first bagpipes. You know, I, I, I had the pleasure of living for Edinburgh in a year, for a year, but I wasn't smart enough to take up the pipes there. I learned them here in Durham, North Carolina. Tonight I'll play three Burns tunes. Uh, the first, a body drinking tune, My Love, She's But a Lassie Yet. Then his lovely love song, Ye Banks and Braes. And finally, his incredible anthem to the equality, to the equality of humanity, A Man's a Man for All That. These are my Zoom pipes. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. And you're right. That was the first ep episode of uh, bagpipes. So still sounded great. <laughs> and now Tom is going to come back with another poem. Thank you, Clark. So now we're going to do a poem really about leadership and about oppression. Sorry. Um, about leadership and about oppression. Um, Robert the Bruce was a Scottish king who was leading the Scots in the fight against the English invaders. And they were near a wee burn called the Bannock Burn. And the Scottish army was a fairly ragtag army with a few horses. And across the other side of the burn were King Edward's troops 
with their chain mail and all their regalia. And the Scottish troops were very, very nervous the night before the battle. Robert the Bruce had to rouse them. So this is what Robert Burns imagined that Bruce said that night to those Scottish troops and inspired them to the greatest victory. Scots were here by Robert Burns. Scots were here with Wallace bled. Scots whom Bruce has often read. Welcome to your gory bed. Archer victory. Knows the day and knows the hour. See the front of battle lower. See approach proud Edward's power. Chains and slavery. Who would be a traitor knave? Who would fill a coward's grave? Who the bases be a slave? They in turn and flee. What does Scotland's king in law? Freeman's sword will strongly draw. Freeman stand or freeman fall? Let him follow me. By oppressions, woes, and pains, by your sons in servile chains, we will drain our dearest veins, but they shall be free. Lay the proud usurpers low, tyrants fall in every fall, liberties in every blow, let us do or be. Thank you, Tom. I'm ready to fight now, I think. <laughs> now, Daniel Sheeran will sing and play for us. Hey, everybody. I'm going to be playing Green Grow the Rashes. It's one of my favorites of the Burns catalog. Uh, when I was younger and first learning to write songs, I, I wrote a song called Kings and Queens. And uh, later in my life, I was introduced to Robert Burns, and I came across Green Grow the Rashes. And I found that the second verse of his song seemed to be written with some of the same spirit that I was feeling when I wrote the second verse of my own song. And uh, it made me feel even more connected to the great Scotsman, Mr. Rabbi Burns. Uh, but all that being said, I think the final verse of this song is actually my favorite. Green Grow the Rashes. There's not but care on every hand And every hour that passes, oh What signifies the life of man And twere not for the losses, oh Green grow the rashes, oh Green grow the rashes, oh the sweetest hours that e'er I spent were spent among the lasses. Oh. The worldly race may riches chase, and riches may fly them all. And though at last they catch them fast, their hearts can ne'er enjoy. Grow the rashes, oh. Green grow the rashes, oh. The sweetest hours that e'er I spent were spent among the lasses, oh. But give me a cane, any hour it done. My arms about my dearie. Worldly cares and worldly men may all go top city. Green grow the rashes, oh. Green grow the rashes, oh. The sweetest stars that e'er I spent were spent among the lasses, oh.
Mother Nature swears the lovely dears Her noble work she classes all Her apprentice hand she tried on men And then she made the lasses all Green go the rashes all Green go the rashes all The sweetest hours that e'er I spent Were spent among the lasses all Green go the rashes all Green go the rashes all The sweetest hours that e'er I spent Were spent among the lasses Thank you so much, Daniel. That was great. And now Tom will come back for us and recite his own composition. Well, what a beautiful contrast, those two songs that Bobby and Daniel sang, the contrast to Scott's way. So as some of you have, will have read in the town crier, there's a long and wonderful article by Clark about all the series of coincidences that led up to me going down to the John C. Campbell, where Bobby was teaching a Scottish poetry class. And I spent a wonderful week there. And during that week, Bobby challenged us all and said, that she wanted us to write a poem from the perspective of somebody who was a minor figure in literature or poetry. And I thought about it one evening and I've always, ever since I heard Tam O'Shanter being recited, I've always thought what an incredible poem Tam O'Shanter is. And if you do get the chance to follow the link to Hugh Farrell reciting Tam O'Shanter, you really, get an understanding of that, of that rollicking poem. It's long and it's wonderful. So I sat down for two days and thought about the characters that are in Tam And Tam, as you probably most of you know, was quite a drinker. And he would go down to the pub in air on a market day, he would go and sometimes he'd not even come back and sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes he'd stay the whole weekend. And he drank with his crony, Suter Johnny. Meanwhile, his wife Kate was at home. And the most wonderful line I think in Tamashanter is that Kate was at home nursing her wrath to keep it warm. So she was at home. Um, Tom would ride home on his horse, his gray horse, Meg. He would ride home and he would ride past the ruined church of Alloway and the graveyard there. And Kate had given him warnings about things that might happen. And incredible things happen, which I'm not even going to try to describe. You have to read. Tam um, So here's Kate of Shanta. If you wish to comprehend this poetical banter, you first must listen to Tam Shanta. Kate O'Shanta's great sadness while well, at drink were driving Tam to madness. Oft three nights a week he spent in air with Suter Johnny, they made quite a pair. Things were now quite out of hand. So Kate determined to make a stand. She called him a skellum, but that didn't work. And a drunken blellum, a bit of jerk. 
She coaxed and cajoled Tam for days and days, but her efforts left him quite unfazed. Soon the rumours about Tam and Captain Jean became widespread, and Kate's heart was a breaking there alone in her bed. Now Johnny, being a romantic fella, had married a European named Isabella. She was a seamstress of great renown, and women flocked to her who wanted a gown. Oft times, when Town Johnny had gone off to air, Kate and Isabella, their worries would share. One evening they came up with a wonderful plan. You could call it shock therapy for Kate's beloved man. Willing customers of Isabella and their daughters were recruited as witches to witness some slaughters. They sewed their costumes until after dark. One seamstress even stitched up a kaisark. Another used furs that she had found to make a costume like a hound. Meanwhile, pipers learned to grimace while scarling, while dancers learned to jig while burling. And then Kate Brisk and Great Uncle Dick to play the role of the deal, Nick. Now, Suter Johnny was full of blether, but he could high predict the weather. He'd seen the old moon cradling the new, so he forecast storms that grew and grew. That stormy week weekend, while Tam was drinking, witches and warlocks from their hooses were slinking to the ruined Alwy Kirk they came, where Tam would ride on his right road to him. What happened next, you all know very well. For poor Tam, though he'd entered hell. So when the witches gave their chase, Tam drove poor Meg as if to a race. Now, in Tam's wee cottage, upon a nail, there hangs in glory the grey mare's tail. For twas Kate who was scared Tam to near to death in the dark, went dressed as witch nanny in a cut his sock. She'd caught up with Maggie after dancing a jig and had yanked her tail off for fall the break. The lessons learned that night by Tam and Kate, he opened up for them a heavenly gate of entire weekends spent together while old cronies in air continued to blether. Their times together, especially in their bed, and nay like the poppies whose bloom is shed, and nay like the snowflakes on the river, there for a moment and then gone forever. They knew wander the glens in the glorious gloaming, heading for their homes like twa pigeons homing, and passing the old kirk in the mist. They pause at the graveyard where first they kissed. And while they are strolling arm in arm, Kate is nursing me rough to keep it warm. Every time Tam thinks Tam thinks a boozing, then without fail, Kate brings up the memory of the grey mare's tale. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Tom, did you want to introduce Bobby? That's okay. <laughs> well, I'll just do, I'll do it for him. How about that? <laughs> no. Tom, I'm did sorry. you want to talk about it? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So that poem had such a wonderful romantic ending. And like so many of the poems and songs we've heard tonight, they're full of love and romance. Who could be more appropriate to sing what is probably the greatest love song that ever was written than Bobby Pell, the lovely lady who inspired me to write Kate O'Shanter, Bobby Pell. 
Tom, you're too kind. I am so proud of you. What a grand student. All right, so this one, a red, red rose, what we often find in the ballads are motifs of repeated imagery and the rose, even today, is one of the most beloved for love. So here we have Robert Barnes, a red, red rose. Oh, my love's like the red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love's like the melody that sweetly played in tune. As fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I. And I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry. Till all the seas gang dry, my dear, and the rocks melt with a song. Oh, I will love thee still, my dear, when the sands of life shall run. And fair thee will, my only love, and fair thee will a while, and I will come again, my love, though it were ten thousand miles. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Absolutely beautiful. And to all the seas gang dry, that always conjures up such an amazing image of everlasting love. Uh, just before I move on to thanking everybody, I wanted to, to very briefly mention this clock that I'm standing beside, because it was made by James Howden who was an Edinburgh clockmaker. And James Howden was born 10 years before Robert Burns and died 10 years after Robert Burns. So this clock, which is ticking now, was ticking during the lifetime of Robert Burns. And I'm sure that James Howden must have heard Robert Burns reciting poetry when Robert was invited to Edinburgh to recite poems many times there. I just wanted to say that before thanking everybody this evening. And I think the transcending of time that's represented by this clock, we heard about the Battle of Bannockburn way, way back. And then Robert Burns himself, and now we're here now, and it's tomorrow in Australia already. Okay, I promised to be the person to acknowledge the wonderful, wonderful contributions that Bobby and Andrew have Daniel have made this evening. And my gratitude to them for stepping up. I, I asked them, each of them, out of the blue, and they all agreed just like that to, uh, to play and sing this evening. So Robert Burns used to write poetry which he spent a long time crafting and working on but he also wrote what they called occasional poems which were poems written for an occasion so this morning i thought i'd better write an occasional poem instead of doing a normal thank you and i have been very nervous about this evening as you can tell by my inability to switch on the video when I should switch it on. So, uh, so here we go. This is to acknowledge with gratitude all those who participated this evening. To do the thank yous is never easy. In fact, it makes my stomach go queasy. It's made even harder when we're on Zoom, 
because those I'm thanking aren't in the room. Let's start the list with our sisters and brothers. They're our best critic, like many others. And there I'm going to stop and mention my sister Maymo, who for the, she's 89 years old and she's on complete lockdown because of her age and conditions. And she's halfway through the complete works of Robert Burns and keeps calling me up with comments and saying, oh, they're much easier to understand than I thought. I just had to keep on reading it and then I understood it. So I think that's the best advice for those of you who've never read Robert Burns before. Then there's our families near and far. No need to list them, they know who they are. Now on to Bobby and Andrew and Dan. They have each created many a fan. Jamie is the wizard behind the scenes. Clark organizes what's on our screens. What about dear Linda Rose and Mira? Without their part, we would not be here. And there are more, more than a few, friends like Hugh and you and you. So let's make it simple instead of hard. Let's all give thanks to Robert Burns the Bard, to the immortal memory of Robert Burns. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. That was great. And we're all thankful for you for bringing us all together, the participants and everyone watching too. We are now at the end of our performance. If you've ever been to a burn supper before, you know it's a tradition to end the evening with a rendition of Old Lang Syne. And we're very lucky to have Daniel do that for us tonight. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all acquaintance be forgot in days of old Lang Syne? For old Lang Syne, my dear, for old Lang Syne, we'll take a cup yet for days of old Lang Syne and surely you'll be your pine stop and surely I'll be mine we'll take a cup of kindness yet for days of old Lang Syne for old Lang Syne my dear for old Yet for days of all Lang Syne And there's a hand, my trusty fear And here's a hand of thine We'll take a right good willy walk For old Lang Syne For old Lang Syne, my dear For old For old Lang Syne We'll take a cup of kindness yet For old Lang Syne Thanks a lot, Daniel. That was great. I don't know about everybody else, but that made me look forward to the end of this crazy year even more <laughs> to hear that again. Uh, so I want to thank Daniel for being here tonight and the other performers too, um, Andrew Geller, Bobby Pell, and of course, great Tom Milroy. 
Uh, a good burn supper doesn't just end. It usually kind of slowly winds down. And so in that spirit, as we show you some credits and wave goodbye, uh, Andrew is going to play us off. So thank you all and have a good night. <laughs>
Good night.